In this video, I'm going to help you prepare for the Praxis Elementary Education Science Exam. That's test code 7005. The Praxis Elementary Education Multiple Subjects Exam is split into four subtests, Reading and Language Arts, Mathematics, Social Studies, and Science. But for now, we're going to focus on Science, which has about 50 selected response questions that you'll need to answer in 55 minutes. You'll also be able to use an on-screen scientific calculator. This video will cover three things, what's on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts that will be on the test, and a few practice questions. Ready? Let's go. Now, the Praxis Elementary Education Science Subtest consists of three overarching categories. The categories are Earth Science, Life Science, and Physical Science. Let's go ahead and talk about some key concepts. Each of the original three categories makes up about 33% of your test. So you're likely to see on average about 17 questions from each branch of science. Let's start from the top with earth science, which actually covers earth and space science. And you live on earth, which is in space. So you're naturally great at this category. The big things you're going to see here include earth's structure, the processes and cycles that occur on its surface, its history, and how Earth relates to the rest of the universe. So we can kind of split it up into what's on Earth and what's not on Earth. Let's start close to home and stay on Earth first. You'll need to know about the cycles on our planet and how they work. So the rock cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the water cycle, and all the stuff that goes into changing land on Earth like plate tectonics, volcanoes, and earthquakes, just to name a few. Let's take a sneak peek into what you'll see when you dive into plate tectonics. You're going to need to know the difference between the three types of tectonic plate boundaries. Convergent boundaries occur when two plates move toward each other. Divergent boundaries occur when two plates move away from each other. And transform boundaries occur when two plates slide past each other. All right, moving on to space. You know what comes up here all the time? The phases of Earth's moon. Lucky for you, our study guide has a video that's out of this world. Eh? Eh? No? All right, let's just check out the video. The moon's phase depends on how much sunlight is reflected to us, which changes based on where the moon is on its orbit. There are four main phases, each about a week apart. New moon, which looks pretty much plain black. First quarter. Full moon, which looks fully lit. And third quarter. There are also four transitionary phases that occur between these points. Two when the moon is waxing, which means the light we see is growing. And two when waning, which means it is shrinking. Some people remember this with wax on, wane off. Ready for a practice question like one you'll actually see on your exam? Which of the following describes the positioning of Earth's axis relative to the sun during the autumnal equinox, the first day of fall in the Northern Hemisphere? The sun is directly over the equator during the equinoxes. And although Earth's axis still tilts at 23.5 degrees above the plane of Earth's orbit, the two ends of the axis are equally distant from the sun. So answer A is best. Okay, let's move on to what's important to know from the life science category. Just like the earth and physical sciences, life science makes up roughly 33% of your exam. I mean, technically it would be 33.33333333333. So about 17 questions on your exam will come from this category. In the life science category, you'll see questions on living systems, reproduction and heredity, changes in living things, regulation and behavior, ecology, and personal health. Life science is like an onion with lots of different layers. Universities even offer entire majors in each one of them. So let's get out our microscopes and take a closer look at what you can expect to see on your test. Living systems is all about the, well, the systems of living things. There is a lot to cover in this section understanding what qualifies something as alive, types of cells and organelles, human body systems, and plant systems. 
There is a ton on cells. So we're talking about knowing the difference between plant and animal cells and what all the organelles inside of them do. Like how plant cells have cell walls while animal cells don't. And that the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. Onward to a life science practice question. What is the main function of chlorophyll in plant cells? Chlorophyll captures sunlight for photosynthesis, the process by which plants make food. So option D is correct. Whew, life science nailed it. Like what you saw? There are a lot more great videos just like that one in our study guide, plus tons of practice questions so you can test yourself before the big test. Ready for the final third of your test? That comes from physical science. The three main things you'll see here are matter, force and motion, and energy. In the force and motion category, you're going to need to know all about Newton's laws, like the difference between Newton's three laws of motion. The first law of motion says that objects resist change in motion. Think about a soccer ball. It will stay still until it's kicked. Once it's kicked, it won't stop moving until another force stops it. If a person doesn't stop it, gravity and friction will. The second law of motion is best described by the formula force equals mass times acceleration. So when the force increases, the acceleration increases. If you think about throwing a baseball, it accelerates when it leaves your hand. If you throw it harder, it will accelerate faster. Lastly, the third law of motion. This is the one that says there's an equal but opposite reaction for every force. So if you bounce a basketball, the force that the basketball exerts on the ground is equal to the force that the ground exerts on the basketball. Let's throw you a tricky question on motion. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Which of the following is the best example of the application of this law? Newton's third law explains why objects move in the opposite directions. The law states for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For example, if an airplane engine pushes air backward, the air pushes the plane forward. So this is the best choice. Guess what? We made it through all three sciences, but we still have those last few standards that showed up in all three sciences. You'll see questions about unifying processes like systems models and the history of science, scientific inquiry and the scientific method, using charts and graphs, and creating activities that make students inquire about the world, and scientific research, like using scientific resources and completing labs safely. These standards are very focused on how to teach science. One thing that tends to come up a lot is lab safety. So familiarize yourself with these common lab safety rules. Want a good tip? Use common sense in the lab. Like don't eat your lunch near chemicals and make sure you don't have sleeves dangling or long hair where they can catch fire when working with flames. But when in doubt, check the material safety data sheet for any chemicals you're working with so you are prepared if something happens. So what can you expect these questions to look like on your test? Let's start with lab safety. Which of the following describes an important safety rule for students to follow when using scent to determine the contents in a beaker? In science, unknown materials should never be smelled directly. Instead, a hand should be waved over the opening of the container, directing scent molecules toward the nose. This process is called wafting and protects humans from directly inhaling a substance that might harm the nasal passages or the lungs waft air from above the beaker into the nose. Do not smell the solution directly. So this is the best choice. It also works well to tell you when it's time to take out the trash. Remember that this test also includes teaching science. So here's one that covers pedagogy. Miss Kingley is rather unsure about the cause of the Coriolis effect. So she decides to show a movie about it to her class instead of trying to teach it to them directly. What else should Miss Kingley do in order to prepare for the lesson? Miss Kingley needs to understand the concept herself before she tries to teach it. Whether she teaches it through student exploration, direct instruction, or an outsourced resource such as a movie. 
So the correct answer is that she should study up on the Coriolis effect so she can confidently answer student questions and guide further exploration. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn and test yourself on. If you really want to make sure you're prepared for the Praxis Elementary Science exam, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 Study Guide. It has hours of videos so you can watch and or listen while doing chores or conducting your next experiment. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started. Music